my book start from very, very tiny ideas and it's sort of a little idea that's floating in my head and I need to develop it to become something better, something that's a bit more commercial that I can sell to a publisher. So what I do is I go and find out who else has written on the same sort of themes that I'm using. So I go to the library, I talk to the librarian, and I go to the bookshop and I talk to my friendly bookseller and I find out what's sold well in that kind of genre. And then I try and gather the books around me and have a little think about how the author has done the sort of thing that I'm trying to do. It's not cheating, it's a way of placing your work within a commercial context. So my idea at the moment is to do something about someone who finds a hidden world or a hidden portal or finds a different section of our world. So I've gone to have a look. Um, now, the bookseller recommended this one, The Dark is Rising. It was written in the 1970s. It's really, really fantastic. It's about a boy um, who kind of finds a sort of magical section of our world. And it's about old magic and powers, and that's been really interesting. There's this classic that I read as a child, The Enchanted Wood. I've always loved the idea of a different world at the top of the tree. Um, I like this one, The Tale of Emily Winsap. Uh, it's about a girl who finds out she's a mermaid. And in, in that way, it's fantastical, but because it's underwater, it's slightly different from these ones, which are kind of like another version of our world. I also like The Thirteen Treasures. That's been really useful. And this one, Red Moon Rising. Now, all of these books have kind of helped me think about what I want to do with my characters. And when you're reading as an author, as opposed to reading as a reader, you read in a different way, you read more critically. You try and break down the book in terms of the structure, the characters, the world, because you're looking for things that might help you. So when I read these, I'm trying to think about what kind of world has the author built? In this mysterious other world, how do people speak? How do they dress? What are the rules on magic? What is the law? How does society function? And I also want to get a good idea of some kind of obstacle that the author has set up that their character needs to overcome. And it could be an environmental obstacle, like a storm. It could be a baddie. Or, or it could be something within the character themselves that they have to battle. And so that's where I start. I just get a massive pile of books and I might spend a good few weeks reading them. Once I've read all the books and I've got a kind of feel for the world and I've written down ideas from the books that I might like to change or incorporate into my work, I start to break the books down by structure. What I'm looking for is how the author has got their character from the start of the journey to the end. And usually there's a kind of familiar trope of structure that you'll see in most books. Um, you start out with a character who's a bit innocent and unknowing and something happens, we often call it the inciting incident, and it's something that throws the character out of their comfort zone. And most of the book is a journey about them coming to terms with the new world and learning to face the challenges and growing and becoming stronger. And then at the end, they become usually happy. So I've taken the books and I've kind of broken them down like that. And one of the points that I wanted to look at is when does the character know that their world has changed? So in Liz Kessler's book, The Tale of Emily Winsnap, she starts the book telling us already that the character knows something. The beginning of the book is, can you keep a secret? I know everyone has secrets, but mine's different, kind of weird. So we start out with the character right at the beginning and we hear there's something different about her. In The Enchanted Wood, there's a little hint because the first chapter is called How They Found the Magic Wood. And it doesn't take very long before our three children find the tree, but it's a little bit longer than in the tale of Emily Winslap. It's the first few pages or so before they actually go and find the tree. In Red Moon Rising, the main character, Lainey, is going to find out she's a fairy. But she doesn't find out until about page 38, and we join Lainey on her journey in realising she's got these strange and magical powers, and what could they be, and what could they mean, and we're very much alongside her as she makes her discovery about who she is. So I might write down, 
where that change took place. That might be the first thing that I would make a note of. And then I would look at what was the inciting incident. In the Enchanted Wood, there's a little gnome that steals a picnic from a group of elves and then the children follow him. And you could argue that's where it starts off. That's where the children start to realise something's a bit weird. In Liz's book, it's a swimming lesson where the main character, Emily, suddenly finds that her legs have turned to a tail. And in Red Moon Rising, there's a bully that prompts our character, the main character, to do something in response and expose her powers. So I'm looking for things like that. That's the start of my structure. But I'm also tracking who's the baddie, what's the challenge, what's happening in the main part of the book. And the final bit I look at is where is the low point in the book? Now this is the lowest point your character will face, where everything's going wrong and they've got to pull something from within, pull some power they never knew they had, or pull some kind of strength or ability out to, to beat all the baddies or all the obstacles or all the environmental factors like storms. And as you start to analyse books, you realise actually how late the low point comes. In these books, most of it happens very near the end. The lowest point is really near the end of the book. And what I do is I write down when that is. And I don't write down the page number. I write down the percentage point we've reached. So if we've reached 87% of the book, I write that down. And that helps because then if you're analysing really long books or really short books, it doesn't matter about the pages. It's about the proportion that the author's used. And the other thing that's really interesting to note is how small... The, the ending is, the bit when the characters are all happy, doesn't tend to take up very much of the book. It's a, you know, two or three, four percent of the book is the very end when the characters are all happy. And these are the things that I note down and I make for myself an Excel table. And I list all the books out and I list all the points that everything takes place. And it helps me with, with my work, it helps me kind of follow a similar arc. <laughs>